Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I really wanted to focus on a tag uh, that I just think sounds absolutely fascinating um, and I'm just really keen to uh, to try out and kind of see a little bit how this all works. Um, so this is the Mooks and the Gripes tag um, and it's sort of a bucket list tag of sort of choosing 10 books that you have sort of been meaning to read for a really long time and would ideally like to at some point in the future read and um, I think uh, this it's been really interesting seeing people's responses to this tag so so far uh, because there are so many interesting ideas and and books that come up as part of this and I think what Sean has done really well with this is kind of keep this nice and simple but also really encourage people to think really broadly what are those books that you keep kind of putting off and keep thinking about for another time um, and there are so so many and it's, uh, it's interesting because quite a lot of people's responses have also overlapped quite nicely with mine um, and uh, yeah so let's let's kind of get going on this um, I should also note that this is related to uh, the Mooks and the Grapes podcast um, and this was a sort of a prompt in one of the podcast episodes um, uh, the Mooks and the Grapes, from what I understand, is a sort of reference from a James Joyce book. I want to say the portrait of the artist as a young man. I might be wrong on that. Um, and is also um, the name of a reviewer um, who does lots of reviews on uh, Goodreads and, and some other places as well. Often um, really interesting, quite a broad range of books as well kind of covered. So without further ado, let's uh, jump in and look at some books that I've been meaning to read for a very, very long time. Uh, and let's get started. So um, there are quite a few in here. You'll notice pretty much straight away as I start talking about these, a lot of these are quite long books and that probably does do a lot of explaining as to why it's taken me so long to read them um, and get round to them because I, I know I will love most of these. I've just really, I think it, a lot of these just need a bit of a run up. So um, one that I was basically already thinking about for this prize and then she only went and won the women's prize um, and that has sort of bumped it up and that is of course Susanna Clark with uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell featuring a Waterstones 3 for 2 sticker that I think has been on this book since I got it. Wait, well I mean it would have been, I didn't just randomly add the sticker afterwards. Uh, but you know I think I got this book probably not long after it came out in paperback um, which tells you, you know, it's been a good number of years um, and it has just been sat on my shelf for so long that you can see you know here is the red of the front cover here is the sort of oh, it's not as clear here here's the kind of really faded red of the spine because it's sort of just been sun bleached from for many many years just being out there um, and this is a uh, a thousand page little chunkster and this uh, is a sort of Victorian era kind of well sort of just pre-Victorian um, era kind of book it kind of deals with a bit a bit with sort of fantasy and magic and kind of all of these these things but I remember again sort of showing how long ago this has been my English teacher at school I think just not long after this book had come out was just absolutely raving about it was in love with it I remember her being really excited because there are occasionally footnotes uh, in the book and she just thought that was such a nice little touch and this is one of those books that at the time came out and was a bit of a sort of cult classic in some ways and it sort of still kind of kept quite a lot of popularity and really loved to see obviously with Susanna Clarke winning uh, the Women's Prize recently very deservedly so for Piranesi it's really interesting to see uh, that there's also going to be a bit of renewed interest in her back catalogue um, and I really hope that this book um, gets read by more people. I say this before having read it but I just kind of assume that I'm going to love it because uh, I really love Piranesi. So there we go. Next up, um, although this is a book that uh, in many ways I think a lot of people have said it isn't necessarily her best work um, and can be quite depressing in its own way. Um, this book is still nonetheless a bit of a classic particularly in LGBT fiction in the UK um, and that is Radcliffe Hall's The Well of Loneliness. Um, so this was one of the first really prominent books at least in the UK that dealt with um, sort of lesbianism that really dealt with Sort of same-sex relationships in a way that um, the public that was sort of a bit more unabashed. Um, I think in some of her other work um, it had been a little bit more obscured and I think this was a book that um, sort of really towed that line a lot more closely and sort of made a lot of reference to these characters being in what was essentially meant to be viewed as a same-sex relationship and um, you know it, it was it was really deeply controversial at the time it um, there were many people trying to ban it and trying to remove it and um, the book sort of persevered so part of me thinks even if I don't like the book as it is you know even if it's perhaps 
doesn't stand up as well or perhaps even if it's you know whatever else uh, it's still sort of such a classic that I'm really intrigued to go and check it out um, and I'm kind of yeah I'm, I'm sort of wanting to see how that all goes um, and actually the next book on this list is also a bit of a kind of queer classic in its own right um, and that is Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown um, and this is a book that I hadn't actually heard of until quite recently um, and then sort of various people sort of around Pride Month and around various other uh, sort of queer uh, sort of shout outs for books mentioned this book and it, it's sort of one that it was again a bit of an early lesbian classic or kind of again a book that dealt with same-sex attraction in a way that wasn't really that was quite groundbreaking you know and was quite new um, and so again is one that it's kind of, since I've heard about it, it's sort of now joined this bucket list of, I know I will at some point read it. I, there hasn't currently been too much sort of urgency or pressure, uh, partly because I think I keep on being like, oh, I'm going to go and read some other stuff. Um, in that exact voice, that's how I make all of my decisions. <laughs> and um, as a result, is something I just, yeah, I think, I know I will eventually get around to, but I kind of need to almost say it out loud to kind of convince myself that it's something I'm going to go back and do. Um, keeping in the 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 vein of um sort of queer classics or kind of books that sort of have had quite a, a sort of substantial role in that uh, we also have dancer from the dance by andrew holleran um holleran rather and this book um is sort of really focuses on sort of new york gay scene in the 70s and as a result it what has sort of apparently been so so interesting about this book and has sort of kept you know been such a sort of fascinating um, thing about it has been that snapshot of a life, um, particularly of a kind of uh, an emerging kind of nascent queer scene, particularly just before the AIDS crisis. And that was sort of a period of time that obviously was so sort of saw such dramatic changes for the queer community and particularly sort of um, gay and bisexual men. Um, but obviously many, many other people in the community, you know, sort of also, you know, widely across the world, um, people in really marginalised groups, it, it affected so, so many people. And so it's really interesting to see um, in a book like this, this kind of scene and what it looked like in that moment just before everything, you know, that kind of things that sort of opened up and then kind of closed off again. Um, and so I'm really, really excited to, to finally um, read this. I bought it a, a bit ago and it's sort of, again, just been sat there and I will at some point read it, I'm sure. But um, yes, there we go. And keeping with a bit of a queer theme, um, I've also got Virginia Woolf's The Waves on here. And uh, this is partly because I sort of realised um, the three novels of Virginia Woolf that I've read, um, being Orlando, To the Lighthouse and Mrs Dalloway, are books that I adore. I absolutely love them, think they're fantastic. And then I just sort of stopped, re I just didn't really read any more of her stuff. And it's weird because I know that I would probably love other books, particularly The Waves, which sounds like it's really up my alley. I know that Eric Carl Anderson over at Lonesome Reader really, really loves it. And so it's one of those books that I've been really meaning to check out, but I just keep on kind of pushing further and further down the list. Um, I'm, you know, prioritising other books above it. And so I will at some point go and, and read it. Um, but, but this is kind of almost a reminder to myself that this book firstly exists and secondly is something that I really want to actually go and read. Um, it sounds like it's sort of exactly the kind of lyrical sort of poetic style that I fell in love with with Mrs Dalloway and would probably still deeply deeply enjoy um, for for her other work uh, you know in works like The Waves so um, yeah really really keen to check this one out. Another classic that I've been meaning to read for a very, very long time, um, which can also be seen by the fact that I've owned a copy of this book for many, many years, is Beloved by Toni Morrison. I think I've only ever read one or two others by her. I've read Sula, and I can't remember if I've read any others, but what I have read of Toni Morrison's, I've just been blown away by. Um, I think I remember reading a short story of hers, Recitatif, I think it was called. And I remember just being blown away by the language and the dynamism of that language and narrative. And Beloved is sort of, I think, arguably her most famous work. And, um, you know, it's it's one of those books that's just sort of such a classic and such a, a kind of go to for so many people and such a big inspiration. that I kind of can't believe I haven't actually read it yet, but um, particularly as it's been sat here on my shelf for a very long time and it's not even that long. Um, so this is definitely a book that I would love to go and read 
in the future. Um, I just need to sit myself down and make myself do it. Um, but I am very, very sure that I will absolutely love it if and when I do. We now move to the part of this video that is all about bloody big books. And there is again, you know, like with Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, probably if it had been a little bit shorter, I probably would have come around to it slightly sooner. It would have been a bit easier to just say yes to actually going and reading it. Uh, but the next few ones that I'm going to talk about are quite long. And that is again, part of why I perhaps parked them just a little bit. But obviously, you know, there's something so beautiful and powerful about long books sometimes when done right, um, when you just absolutely fall into the rhythm of that book and you're in its world and you're kind of just a big part of it and, and as a result it can really stay with you because you've spent so much time living that world and um one <laughs> a book that has come up a lot in people's lists um well these both these books actually have come up a lot in people's lists and i think i can see why because uh, they both just sound fascinating and the first is a suitable boy by vikram seth um and uh, Gunpowder Fiction and Plot spoke about this um, and it kind of exactly summed up why this book sounds like something I really want to read. Um, the fact that it's, what, like 20 something years old now, I think, um, and it's about 1400 or 1500 pages. And the fact that people are still so willing to read this book and still want to read it, despite that length and despite the amount of time says something about the book and that's what gunpowder gunpowder fiction and plot were saying that actually the fact that it's endured as a bit of a classic is probably a bit of a sign um it, it sounds like a book that is deeply deeply interesting with these really layered tricky family histories all kind of woven in um and that sounds like something i'm probably gonna love um and that is i think is a, re a reason a book that i am really keen to check out just because um, I read a, a sh much shorter book of his now, which I can't remember, but it was all written in verse. Um, and I was really quite impressed by the kind of humour um, in Vikram Seth's writing. And so I kind of am really keen to read A Suitable Boy. And a few friends of mine who, um, whose reading opinions I really strongly trust have also loved it. So I'm going to follow their lead on this and add that one in. Um, and the other book that's come up quite a lot from people um, doing this tag has been Anna Karenina. Uh, by Leo Tolstoy and I again friends of mine who have read it have loved it it sounds like it's such an interesting character study into this woman um at the heart of it and it just sounds so so good and also there's a song uh, <laughs> that I've, I really enjoy um called uh, like um, I've got a bad feeling about Anna Karenina um uh, which I mean it's, it's a kind of comic song but it is it kind of for me just sounds like it's going to be something that I'd really love um so anyway that is a book that it, it's just sort of such a classic and such an enduring one um, I've read War and Peace um and really enjoyed that but I've heard that Anna Karenina is sort of that even that like next step up really for many people of just being such a detailed look at this character and, and sort of society around her that is just so so well worth reading and the final two chunky books to make up this list um, are firstly Joyce Carol Oates with Blonde. Um, so this is a book all about Marilyn Monroe uh, and um, again sort of no prizes for, for guessing that Eric Carl Anderson over at Lonesome Reader um, is sort of partly what sort of turned me on to this book um, but also it's a book that I'd heard about for a few years it's sort of a, a book that has been very much celebrated and apparently is just sort of such a deep and interesting look at this really complicated um, life for, for Marilyn Monroe. You know, she was a such a big public figure um, and such an icon in so, so many ways, but also had this kind of quite difficult and tricky life um, in, in some ways. So um, sounds like a book that's really interesting. And again, you'll sort of notice not only a lot of these books, quite long ones, they're also kind of character studies. And I find books like that fascinating because the, the longer you kind of spend with a character like that, the more that I think you really so you just it stays with you um i had this really recently with um the magician by colm tobin uh, which is all about thomas mann and i just thought the way that it was written kind of focusing in on his perspective was just so appealing that i just sort of came away from it feeling uh, you know sort of so invested um and i'm i'm fairly sure that's exactly what would happen as well if i were to read uh well when i read uh blonde by joyce carol Oates. And that takes us to the final book, uh, which is A Fine Balance by Rahinton Mystery. Um, and in many ways, I almost feel like I'm cheating by putting this one on the list because it's a Booker shortlisted book. 
um, I will end up reading it <laughs> at some point. Um, but again, it's it's a book that so, so many people I know have really, really enjoyed and, and seems to again have that kind of enduring appeal um, even long after it was published. You know, there are lots of books that were sort of shortlisted for prizes at the time and have sort of not necessarily stayed in the public consciousness or maybe don't feel quite as timeless. But A Fine Balance is one of those books that still seems to have quite a strong critical reception many years later. So, uh, and again, Gunpowder Fiction and Plot spoke about um, how good this book is and it's one that I've been meaning to check out for a while. So that is probably one, I think I'd probably make up my 10th spot on this list. But I would love to hear from you. What are some books that you have on your bucket list that you'd really love to read before, and um, saying before you die it always sounds really dramatic, but that you want to read and that's, that's sort of really big and high up on your priority list. Um, and, you know, you just sort of really think, okay, this is something I want to sink my teeth into. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on that. Equally, in the comments, if there are books of these that you'd like to sort of bump up a little bit, uh, I would love to hear them because those are the books. I, I kind of need a little bit of urgency or kind of a nudge in the right direction to check them out. So if there's a book, particularly if you want to hear, I mean, my rambly thoughts on them, uh, please do let me know. Um, I don't know why you'd want that, but there we go. Um, but if if there are books that you would sort of like to, me to bump up this list a little bit more and hopefully cover fairly soon, I'd love to hear it because, um, yeah, I, I need I need that proverbial kick um, up my proverbial to uh, to kind of go and read these and actually sort of sit down with them. Anyway, I've been Bob the Bookerer, um, and as a result, I would like to tag various people. I think quite a few people have already done this, so apologies if I'm if I'm tagging people who have already been tagged. Um, and equally, if you want to do it and um, have not been tagged, please consider yourself tagged. Um, I'd first like to, to tag uh, Jennifer Loves Books. Um, she is really great and I just, I think she'd have some really interesting, um, great examples for this. Uh, Leo Bancroft as well, I think would have some fantastic ideas. And Low Shelf Esteem, um, I think could also have some really fun ones, um, some quite unexpected ones on this list as well. So I've been Bob the Booker, take care and speak to you all soon. Bye bye.